there's only one good, and that is God. No man down here can say he's good. And every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights above, in which no variableness of turning. And the grace that we're talking about is will come to an end. How many realize that? We're in a dispensation of grace. Now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time. There is a window of grace, a dispensation of grace. Paul said that it's committed to me, this dispensation of grace, as it is now, this mystery, that is, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. And the devil has done everything he can to destroy that office, the offices of the apostle and the prophets. Most in every denominational church on the face of this earth in what I call the external church. When I say the external church, I mean the church that is the so-called church where the chaff and the wheat are sitting together. But the ones that are in truth know it as Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And see, it's made all the nations drunk by the wine of the wrath of her fornication. What's a fornication? You thought you were serving God but you went after another spirit. It's not uh, in the natural. It is spiritual. And it's a great mystery. Notice that mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, in Revelation 18 is all capital letters in bold, bold type. The only time that you will see bold capital letters all that is, all letters capitalized, not just the first, but all of them in bold print, is the name of Jesus or anything that pertains to deity. That's the reason that Mystery Babylon is such a deception. Such a deception that so many people will follow her pernicious ways because it will be a time of great, great, tribulation, a great deception, the strong delusion. Delusion is that you have truth, but if you're going to delude something, what do you do? You simply just add something that's different. For example, if we have 100% grape juice, well, they say that's too strong. The gospel's too strong, so what do we do? We dilute it. We throw a little water in there. What does that mean in in, in Babylon. Well, you've got the pure wheat of the Word of God. Babylon. Babel. Babel's confusion. God's not the author of confusion. So what do you do? You have the perfect wheat, the perfect corn of the Word of God. And you add a little sawdust in it. <laughs> the sawdust there will kill you. How much leaven does it take to get you the Word of God where it's an untruth? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lot. Somebody said, but there's a lot of truth there. Yeah, there's a lot of truth, but the little leaven leaveneth the whole lot. So we have to purge out that old leaven, thereby offer in ourselves a pure offering to God, the offering of the calves of our lips, whereby we offer praises unto God, the calves of our lips. We don't go out there and kill a calf anymore and set it on an altar burnt offering. But it's the calves of your lips. Grace, grace is how we are saved, by grace. But grace is an extended period of time that is unmerited. No one's worthy of it. But it's by grace through faith. And let me ask you a question in here. Are, we, are you hot or cold? Or is, is a little warm in here to you? Is everybody okay? Everybody all right? Does their sister go? Thank, uh, thank God for visiting today. We're glad to see you. Uh, we are getting more responses on the broadcast. They tell us in uh, KSLA ch Channel 12 that we are the highest ranked uh, religious program on the air. And they say that we're really kicking it. I guess that means it's good. Y'all are really kicking it. So... That, that's good. We, we thank God for that. Uh, we're having more orders for the books that we have, and they're scattered out all over the place. We have, we have them come from Nacogdoches. We're having them come from Louisiana. We're having them come from Arkansas. I didn't even know we were in Arkansas. 
but we are. So I thank God for that. Uh, they are ordering the book, The Great Deception. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the, the deception and the true grace. Grace is not just an act. Grace is progressive. It's a progressive glorification from glory to glory, from faith to faith, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's progressive. Somebody said we're saved. Yes, we are saved, and we are being saved. Notice that Jesus said, the time is coming and now is. Now, wait a minute. Either it is or it ain't. <laughs> the time is coming. Oh, and it now is. That those that hear the voice of the Son of Man shall live. Well, wait a minute. It's here right now, and it still is coming. In other words, uh, the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. In other words, the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more the Word of God is going to be revealed to us in truth, the Spirit of truth. By this, the grace, and Peter says, the grace that comes to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The grace that comes to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That means that every time that you have a revealing of uh, what is the, how do, you, how do you know Jesus? I had a woman walk up to me, and she says, oh, I want to see Jesus. Oh, if I could just see Jesus. If I could just behold him. And she had a Bible in her hand. That word of God that you have, those scriptures that are well able to save us. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they that testify of who? Of me. That word of God on Revelation 19, 13 on his vesture, dipped in blood. His name is called the word of God. Jesus is that word. 1 John 1. 1 John 1, it talks about John, the beloved disciple, that we have beheld, looked upon, and handled, heard and seen and handled the word of God. Well, if you speak a word, how can you handle that word? You can't grab that word. The word is spirit and the word is life. Yes, but if that word, that spirit, that life was manifest, you see, that's a mystery of godliness. Most of the church world believes that the Son of God was manifest in the flesh. The Son of God was not manifest in the flesh. God was. Somebody said, that's no big difference. Yes, it is. That's a difference of light and darkness, my friend. You see, 1 Timothy 3.16 said, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God, not God, not the Son of God, not God Jr., but God himself was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, laid on the world. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, received up into glory. How did God do that? Somebody said, God sent forth his son. Yes, he did. But there was nowhere in the word of God that it says the spirit, the father, which is God is a spirit, that one spirit spoke to another spirit and said, go down there and die for the sin of the world. There is no other spirit. There was only one body, one Lord, one spirit. One, Ephesians 4. Well, it's by revelation. Sure it is. But if there's only one spirit, how did one spirit say to another spirit, go down and die for the sin of the world? There's no, no scripture for that whatsoever. Then why does everybody preach that? That the Father said to the Son, go down there and die for the sin of the world. Where does it say that? Where? But you say that we're hard because we say if you do not believe that word, you will not make heaven. 
What if you know the truth and you sit there and you shut your mouth to go along with the crowd? What's going to happen to you? You're going to love the praises of man more than praise of God. You're going to please man rather than God, and guess where you're going to wind up? Now, there's no funeral in the world that I've ever been to that they put the person in hell. They're going to put that person in heaven no matter what. And fine, it's, fine. it's the words that's ascending off. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus said, straight as the gate and there is a way, and few there be that find it. But yet, if you ask 90% of the people here in America on the street, are you a Christian? They'll say yes. 58% of Americans are Christians. Less than 1% are Muslim. And yet, these little Muslim devils are causing more havoc in the United States and the world than any other religious sect. In Surah 91, now somebody said, well, this is radical Muslim. No, it's not radical Muslim. In Surah 91, in their Quran, it says they, uh, as a true Muslim, Islam means surrender. Muslim is one who surrenders. Allah, in the Old Testament, a few times, when you look up God in the Old Testament, it will say Elohim. Anytime you see an Eem in Hebrew, it means plural. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. But when you go and look at the Elohim and the first seven Hebrew words, it says Bereshit, Bereshit, bara, Elohim, eight, E-H-T. That eight, E-H-T, is the great alphabet. The Allah through the top. It's the longest chapter in your Word of God. It's the center chapter, Psalm 119. It goes through the Allah through the top. That is the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and when you look at Psalm 119, you're going to see that every one of those letters are capitalized. Means it's deity. It's called the great alphabet. How can you know the word without knowing the alphabet? It's impossible. In the beginning, the word, word with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. How? By Him. Isaiah 44, 24, He spanned the heavens out. And, this, and uh, create the earth by myself alone. No angels were used in creation. It was simply God spake and God said, and it was. Well, who is that? Who is that God that created? Jesus claimed that he is that God that created it. Revelation 1.8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega. That is the same as uh, the Psalm 119, Aloth and Tav. The Aloth is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Tav is the last. The Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And Omega is the last. It is the same as saying the English A to Z. The last letter, in other words, and everything that God is from A to Z, Alpha and Omega, Allah through the top, Jesus said, I am. Revelation 1.8, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is that Almighty God. Well, how can that be? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you'll see there that in... John 1, it says, in the beginning the Word was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Somebody said, if he's with God, he's not God. Yes, he is. But it's just a different function of that Spirit. The Word is the expression office of the Spirit. The Father is the administrative office of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the power office of the Spirit. But it is the same self-same Spirit. You see, in 1 John 5, 7, there's three that bear record in the earth. The Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. One and the self-same spirit. Jesus, before Abraham was, I am. Not 
divine flesh, but he is the Word of God. He is the Father of glory. He is the Holy Ghost. He is everything God is, was, or ever will be. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 says all things were made by him. Whether it be thrones, principalities, fires, visible and invisible, all was made by him. You see it going on there in John 1, it says oh, he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Well, how would you like to make something, create it by yourself, for you and for your good pleasure, Revelation tells us, and nobody gives you any honor and glory for doing it. Matter of fact, comes against you and wants to kill you when you made it. Well, you know, if I was God, thank God I'm not, I done killed them all and got me another batch. But then that wouldn't show forth God's glory, his love, his power to save and to redeem us. You see, we're justified by faith. But you're redeemed, and redeemed, and then justified, justification, sanctification, and ultimate glorification. How many has ever heard sanctification preached? Raise your hand. Sanctification. Sanctify yourself holy. You ever heard it preached? The old-time preachers that worked in the field all day long with their overalls, some of them out there actually doing the field, picking cotton and everything else, from sunup to sundown, worked in the fields. They would have what they call brush arbors. They would leave. As soon as they got off of work, wash your hands and go to an old brush arbor meeting that would start at sundown and go three, four, five, six, seven hours. And, that, and then get up the next morning at the break of day and go out and work in the field all day long. We can't, and this is night after night after night. And those brush arbor meetings would go months at a time, some of them a year at a time, and never have one rest night. Now, where's America today? When I first started preaching back in the 70s, you could get a move of God and revival, and they claim that revival, they would take a pounding for you. A pounding meant that they would bring food and all kinds. may not have money, but they'd give you a chicken. They'd give you a pound and a, a pound of this, a pound of that, and a pound of this, and a pound of that. Call a pounding. And they'd keep you. You may not make any money, but they'd keep you, hopefully, in food. But then as time went on, 80s and 90s, it got to be where the two or three, four months' worth of revivals turned into two or three weeks. Now, at this time, a revival is called Four Nights. You can't even crack the Word of God in four nights. So what does it mean? It means that we as a nation are going to have a correction, that God is going to intervene in men's affairs, and it's called judgment. When judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness. What is righteousness? That Jesus came from God, went back to God. That word was made flesh. What is that word? It's the alpha to the omega. It's the aloft, tav. And the sealing of God in the last days. He put a mark on Cain. That mark was a tav. It was a mark of sin. It was a cross. Well, what did Jesus do? He took that cross... Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Then what did God do? He literally went there to the cross. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But curses is he that hangeth on a tree. He that knew no sin became sin for us. Hallelujah. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Oh, let's don't talk about the cross on oh, word. Christian soldiers marching as to war. Uh-uh. No, that's too militant. Get it out of the church. Can't have that. We got to sing slow stuff and don't mention militant or, or war or soldiers of the cross. But then what do you do with the word? Endure hardship as a good soldier. 
Where's that? To enter into grace at the revelation of Jesus Christ, you have to understand the government of Jesus Christ, and the government shall rest upon his shoulder. Isaiah 9, 5. This battles with confused noise. Why? Because there's voices out there everywhere. This and claims the truth, that and claims the truth. No preacher I've ever heard got up in the pulpit and said, I want you to know I'm a liar, and if you follow me, we're all going to hell. <laughs> They're going to, everyone say, I've got the truth. Right. Every one of them. And when you get into, uh, the more you get into the, deep of the, of the depth of the Word of God, the more the ascension and the more the people are scared of it. Because, they said, because, you know, I can understand if we just say we're saved and don't get into Ezekiel, Daniel, the book of Revelation, we're okay. But the deeper you get into it, it scares people. How many people you say, praise God, let's, let's get into the book of Revelation? They say, stay out of that. It's too deep. We don't want to know it. Well, then why did God write it? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by John, by his angel to John. And John was given in Revelation 10 a little book, a Bibliorydian. Biblion is that Bible you hold in your hand in the Greek. A Bibliorydian is a little book. He has taken that big book and compressed it to the place where you can eat it. Eat you all of it. It'd be sweet to your mouth, bitter to your stomach. And then, John, you must again prophesy before many nations, kindreds, tongues, and kings. That is not John being raised from the dead. That is the church of the living God that will preach this gospel of the kingdom unto all nations, all the world, for a witness in all nations, and then the end will come. Have you got a few minutes? I'll take you into the northern army, the southern army, the east wind for a while. Let you see what's going to happen to all the nations of the earth. If you were going to pick a book out that sow the judgments of God in all the world, what book would you pick? Who's the prophet to all the nations? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. God has remembered. Jeremiah. What, what, uh, uh, what, when you look at Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, and you look, who would like to be in the shoes of Jeremiah? Not one convert. You get thrown into a 30-foot pit up to your arms. You can't move and fed with the bread of affliction, hated, and literally because he prophesied what was coming upon Israel. Flip that to the spiritual side, what's coming upon the church of the living God. Now, I'm going to give you some scripture, and then don't take my word for anything. Let God lead you. God speaks to you, then you do it. Do not trust in any man's word. The words of Berea were more noble than the ones that says and like it because the search of scriptures daily to see if the things Paul preached were so. Now, what is Jeremiah, the prophet to the nations? I ordained you a prophet when you was in your mama's womb and ordained you a prophet unto who? The nations. Where does judgment begin? Is the house of God, is that Israel? Is that the, the natural Jew? Is that the church of the living God? Is that literally, if judgment must begin at us, the house of God, where shall the end of the sin of the ungodly appear? And the righteous scarcely be saved. Scarcely doesn't mean God has a problem or, or some kind of trouble saving us. It means that it's going to be with difficulty, with tribulation, with persecution. If you will, for a few minutes, stay with me. Go to the book of Jeremiah. And let's see, if judgment first begins the house of God, then Jeremiah should start off in, uh, literally, the house of God. And where is he going to start? At Jerusalem. The same thing we're going to see in Ezekiel as an apocalyptic prophet, Ezekiel. And it's going to run parallel with the book of the Revelation. If you'll take a look at Jeremiah, the first chapter. And in Jeremiah, we see that... Look at verse 5, and I want you to underline a few things. The word of the Lord came to me saying, if the word of the Lord came to you saying, who is that word? From the book of Genesis to the book of the Revelation, who is this word? 
not just a, not just the holy writ, but the, thy word is spirit. Thy word is life. From Genesis to Revelation. Can we take a book out of this and say we don't need it? We don't need the Old Testament. Throw it away. Why? Well, the, the, the law was our schoolmaster in Christ, and these were given for our examples for us, that we should, we should not be and enter into an uh, unbelief. They were written for our examples, Paul said. Jeremiah means God will rise. God will rise. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. When judgment's in the earth, men will learn righteousness. Sin is a reproach to any people. The nation that forgets God, God said, I'll turn it into hell. And that's where the United States is right now. When you say that you're a Christian, you're looked at like you're some kind of idiot that just got out of uh, moron class uh, because you say you're a Christian. There was a time in the, in the United States of America, we entered into war. We entered into war with a prayer. Everything, they had a meeting, and the House of Representatives, the Senate, the first thing they did was open it with prayer. Everything that we did, we sought God on. Now, it's a thing of the past. When they have some type of pastor or preacher to say a prayer at the, at the White House along with some Muslim idiot, they, first, they will not say in the name of Jesus Christ. They will say, uh, it, 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 Father in heaven, they'll talk, but they'll never say in the name of Jesus. At a football game, basketball, baseball, they'll never say in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the name, uh, in the name is the blood. For as do often as you do preach this man's name, you do intend to bring his blood upon us. Take a look at Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet to who? A prophet unto the nations. Is this a bona fide, can we say that the effects of this in the natural will take again in the spiritual? Will it? You see, everything cycles. That which is, has been, and that which shall be, has already been. It cycles. It cycles, and, and it's written for our admonition, and it's a profit to the nations. Then, look down at the first vision. Uh, that he sees. Now, verse 10, the, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. In other words, to separate the child from the wheat, from he that serves God, for him that does not serve God. That's his purpose. What does judgment do? It separates the righteous from the wicked, from the the uh, holy from the profane, him that serves God from him that does not serve God, the chaff from the wheat. And the first thing that he sees, moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? To see something is not just look out there and, and uh, Jesus said, what I see the Father do, that I do. Well, he didn't look over and see the Father. What I see my father do, that I do. What is it? Seeing is not looking with, a, with a, a natural eye, but it's what? The spiritual eye. Our eyes being opened. Our ears, uh, 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 eyes in order, eyes with eyes out. Uh, ears uh, with uh, literally to understand the Word of God. So when you have the eyes of the four beasts, eyes before and behind, what are the eyes? It is the understanding of the Word in Revelation. They see things before them and behind them. It's not that they have a million eyes. They have eyes before and behind them. What are the eyes? Are not our eyes with eyes have? What? That you may see. That is the revelation of the Word. So when you have light, it's an epiphany. It's a revelation. It's a literal under, you see that light, it is a revelation of the Word. It's, a, it's, it's the effulgence of the Word, the light of it. But then what happens after you see the light? Lightning strikes, you see the light. 
You have in your spirit, you have a revelation, but it still hasn't taken root in you. Then you hear the thunder. The thunders of the Word of God is the understanding of the Word. All right? So therefore, when their ark is open in heaven, there are lightnings. Not just lightning, lightnings. What? Many revelations of the Word of God, all Jesus, giving you deeper revelation. Then what? Thunders. The seven thunders open their voices, uttered their voices about to write. What? He said, write it not. What are the seven thunders? The understanding of the Word. The understanding of the Word. Thunder. So light. It happens first at revelation. It strikes a, a revelation in your spirit. Then you have to ponder these things. It pierces the heart. But then you have to feed that. And then it takes root in your spirit. And as soon as you have revelation and that faith grabs it, then it, it has to be tried. Can you say amen? amen? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But Think it not strange the fiery trial, which is to try you as some strange thing happen to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, and the glory of God resteth upon you. So think it not strange the fiery trial, which is to try you, and when you fall into divers temptations, uh, count it all joy. Why? That your faith may be tried and come forth as pure gold. So you've never had a revelation in the Word of God, any of you. Me either that has not been tried as by fire. That's the only way that your faith will come forth as pure gold. What's gold? It's the glory of God. It's the brilliance of the Word. It's the glory of God. Jesus uh, literally is the brightness of His glory. Jesus is the express image of His person. Not three persons, one. There's only one person of God. You want to see him? Jesus is the express image of his person. You've seen me. You've seen the Father. Amen. How sayest thou then? Show us the Father. See, the world has gone after the ways of Mr. Babylon the Great, the mother of hearts and abominations of the earth. Why? Because there's only one time in the Word of God it mentions the Trinity. <laughs> Revelation 16, 13. I see three spirits. Are those spirits of God? No. They're unclean spirits. Revelation 16, 13, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. 